Today I've got a problem from the TMUA specimen paper. This is the admissions test you have to do if you want to study economics or computer science at Cambridge, as well as maths at a bunch of other universities. Um, I'd like to do these sorts of problems with my students because there's a few ways you can approach them. And it's interesting to see how a student approaches it and whether they can think of the various ways to approach it. Anyway, let's have a look at it. We've got the positive real numbers a, b, and c are such that the equation x cubed plus ax squared equals bx plus c has three real roots, one positive and two negative. Which one of the following correctly describes the real roots of the equation x cubed plus c equals ax squared plus bx? And we've got various different options here. So if you want to pause, have a read. Uh, if you want to have a read of these, pause the video now and uh, give those a read. But I'm going to dive straight into the solution. Um, my first thought is, well, they've written it in a bit of a weird way. There's obviously lots of overlap terms. So let me just make both sides zero. Oh, well, both of these equations makes one of the sides zero. So I've got x cubed plus ax squared minus oops, bx minus c equals zero. And with this equation, x cubed minus ax squared minus bx plus c equals zero. And these equations look awfully similar. So let me call this first thing here, the first expression on the left-hand side, f of x. Um, so this thing here I'm going to call f of x, and this thing here I'm going to call g of x. And the way to notice this, or the way to kind of solve this, or one of the ways to solve this, is to notice a relationship between g and f. And now you might stare at this and go, well, these are awfully similar, except some of the terms have like an extra negative sign. So f and g, or the x squared and the c term, those go from like plus and minus to minus and plus, so those kind of flip signs, but the odd, like x cubed and bx terms, those stay the same. So it's got something to do with it, whether the power is odd or whether the power is even. And that gets us thinking about parity and odd functions and even functions. And after staring at this for a bit, you might be able to notice that g of x is simply the negative of f of minus x. So if I take f of x and replace all the x's with negative x, the odd terms will become the negatives of what they are, but the even terms will stay the same. So that when I multiply by minus 1 out the front, everything then, the odd terms will go back to normal, which is what they've got here. The even terms will flip sign. So just verify that um, on paper if that doesn't make sense. Um, so g of x equals minus f of minus x. And so therefore we're interested in the roots of well, g of x. So g of x equals 0, well that's if and only if minus f of minus x is 0, which would just mean f of minus x is 0. And so that means that if we find the roots of f of minus x, those will be the roots of g of x. Now we know that f of x has three roots, um, real roots. Let's call them alpha, beta, and gamma. And let's say that alpha is the positive one and beta and gamma are negative. Well, that means then that f of minus alpha, um, f of minus um, minus alpha, will equal zero, and so therefore one of the roots of g is minus alpha, and similarly g of minus beta and g of minus gamma will also be zero, and so therefore g has three real roots. One is minus alpha, which will be a negative number, and the other two are minus beta and minus gamma which will be positive. And so it has three real roots, one negative, two positive, and so the answer therefore is E. This is a really nice solution, I think, it kind of elegant, and you spot that the, you know, the symmetry in the terms here. Another way you could approach this if you weren't too sure, you don't make this observation, is just play around. Plug in some values of A, B, and C, or find a cubic which has three real roots, one positive and two negative. So if I just go x minus one, x plus one, x plus two, and look at this cubic, expand it out, make it in this form, work out what a, b, and c are, then consider this equation with the corresponding a, b, and c, and work out how many real roots it has. That's going to eliminate a bunch of options. You'll still be left potentially with option g, which says it depends on a, b, and c, but at least you can narrow it down to a, a lot more fewer options, and then maybe try another set of values of a, b, and c. Um, but that's definitely another way that you could approach this. But this way that I presented, I think is quite elegant. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.